Friday. It's uh, the day we at least take a little pause to uh, forget just about the present and maybe think a little bit about the future and hopefully do so optimistically. However, that's a little bit challenging right now, isn't it? I try every morning not to listen to the news or get involved in the news before uh, I do my positive work. But uh, my wife was up early, too, and uh, she had the news on, and boy, there we were, stories of the uh, crisis. Uh-oh, we're going, to, we're going to have a food crisis, and you know, you heard the news as well as I will hear it. Yeah, these are difficult and challenging times, and as a result of that, people are in a state of growing anxiety about such things as recession and inflation, and these are not the best of times. 70-80% of the people think that the world, and uh, particularly our American nation, is headed in the wrong direction, and there's nothing about the leadership that we see around the world that is going to give us any great optimism that uh, our leaders will be able to lead us through uh, and into better times. So I want to talk about that, and the question is just that. I'm sorry, but you will not be able to retire. I'm sorry but you will not be able to retire. Well, is that so? Well, that's uh, what I'd like to just spend a little bit of time thinking about, maybe sharing with you, asking you to come back to me, and maybe it's something we could be concerned about. Maybe even we need to pray about it. I'm Stan Houston. The program is Interesting Ideas, and it begins right now. I spent a lot of my uh, working years, and uh, I'm still working. In fact, I'm going to work even more. I still put in, in my uh, mid, uh, almost coming up 70s, mid 70s, I I work probably 40, 50, 60 hours a week sometime. Now I'm very fortunate in that uh, most of my work is something that I would do anyhow, because it's something I love to do. And so I'm very fortunate in that respect. But we are going to be working, as I was for many years, with uh, people in the insurance and financial services industry. And, of course, their primary purpose, as they said, was to talk about uh, helping people, first of all, insure so they could have a secure future and even save for retirement, and that they would then invest that they would be good at uh, doing the marketplace and uh, investing in stocks and bonds and all of the other things. And the purpose of that was to save money for retirement. And uh, that seems to be the goal of many, many people. Now, the thing that has really got us upset is what happens to people who are retired and they're living on the income that maybe they thought would be plenty of money. And now with inflation, with uh, perhaps the other things coming and going, uh, people are not particularly sure. And what if I lose my job? What am I going to do then? And so uh, I'm uh, actually in an office next (laughs) to a man who's a a retirement planner, and he's under a lot of pressure these days. Uh, He tells me, obviously, people uh, are afraid. People are coming to him and say, hey, how's, what are we going to do about this? What's going to happen? Um, and uh, he's doing the best he can to help reassure and see that uh, we can do all that we can. And uh, at one time I said to him, I said, whatever happens when you discover that the person just doesn't have enough to retire, what do you do then? In an honest way, they just can't retire. And he paused for a long time. And he said, Stan, I I still don't know quite how to say that or do that. Uh, I still try to keep up some hope that we can make that happen. Well, what if it becomes true that uh, we won't have enough to retire? Or, no, you will not be able to retire. 
what do we do then? Right now, I, I would love if you could be right here, right next to me, and uh, you'd be across, and you'd have the golden microphone, which is my guest microphone in the studio. The uh, golden microphone goes to the guests, and I would love to hear what you think about that, uh, that idea. What would you say if someone made it quite clear and it was clear to you, no, you will not be able to retire. Well, what I'd like to do, if we may, just uh, for this short Friday, to, to give you some thoughts about that that might be helpful to you. Okay, here we go. Number one, remember that actually the whole idea is rather brand new. Somebody pointed out <laughs> that the idea of retirement was kind of uh, invented by uh, some of the early uh, Florida land developers in the 1920s and 1930s about uh, and here they're trying to sell people to you know move to Florida. Uh, and uh, at that time, Florida was kind of a place, you know, there was no air conditioning of any kind, of any consequence. And uh, Florida was a small, there's a lot of swamp and tropical environment. Uh, uh, it uh, wasn't the place it is today. Well, how can we get people who are tired of the winter to come and spend their senior years? And so uh, the idea of retirement is relatively new. In fact, as a history teacher, you all know that, you know, hey, Social Security, pensions uh, were invented really at their, uh, at their earliest back in the 1920s and 1930s. Before that, what did you do? Well, you just had to keep working or somehow save enough so that uh, you could just do nothing or whatever. And obviously, families had to take care of one another and uh, things took place like that. But the idea was uh, that most people couldn't ever think of. They didn't even know the term. And I have to go back even further. <laughs> What's retirement? So it's always good to remember that we are in peculiar times, in the very history of the world. The idea that after uh, you're done working, you can just take a, a few years, and now the few years has become 10, 15, 20, 25 years, where you don't have to work. You can play golf or do whatever else you please. And there are people today, thousands, millions of people who are able basically to do that, you know. Well, there are also thousands and millions of people who would like to do that, but can't do that. That's the world we live in right now. And I don't know where you're at. You're probably somewhere in between. You probably have some plans for your retirement. And uh, you may be able to uh, retire. And perhaps you'll have to work a little bit longer. Uh, maybe you're going to have to find a way to do uh, some, you know, little compensation, extra compensation in your retirement years. Well, here we go. What I say to people right now is, first of all, start here. You probably will not be able to retire as comfortably as you wish. Just start there. Please remember that. Also remember that your ability to stay well is going to diminish. The proverbial thing that we've all said and known is, you know, growing old isn't for sissies. And we all know that. So, in effect, if you're a person of reality and even a person of faith, you understand that in many cases, retirement is not going to be everything that you hoped it would be. And then, of course, some people just fail at retirement. I have a good friend, uh, his name was Craig, and he's a world-class chiropractor. 
And he, uh, great man, good man, very good at what he does. And uh, he really made me a believer in uh, the ability and the use of chiropractic medicine. And uh, a lot of wisdom, a lot of help. And uh, he retired from Wisconsin and went to Arizona. Guess what happened? <sighs> he got bored. He got really bored. And he played a lot of golf and he was pretty good at it. But eventually, Craig found out, you know, what really gave pleasure to him in life was doing what he really almost believed he was called to do. So he went back to work and he opened a, a chiropractic uh, place in uh, the retirement village where we were located. And he has a very wonderful, almost half-time practice in which he is still serving and caring for people. And that's good that he was able to do that. Now, another friend of mine was a uh, Northwest Airlines 747 pilot. Now, the problem was for him, obviously, he couldn't go back to flying airplanes for Northwest Orient Airlines. And he sometimes confessed to me that, you know, this retirement is, isn't all that I thought it would be. He said, my golf game isn't getting that much better. And um, he said, I, I, re I really don't know what I'm going to do right now. I'm, uh, it's not just what I thought it was going to be. Well, you could duplicate those two stories in many ways. And there's a third story of people who, uh, you know, they just had to find a way to scrape by some way. And uh, maybe it was selling some of their stuff. Maybe it was finding work that, you know, just something they could do to make a few extra dollars. There are a variety of stories of people who uh, look forward and then find that retirement, just like life, is not what they expected it to be. I was told by the local sheriff that even in our rather upscale apartment, uh, apartment, retirement apartment and home community, that uh, you would still uh, discover, he said, uh, I still get calls for domestic violence from the community. And uh, that's a problem. And unfortunately, we also find that uh, the uh, rate of uh, alcoholism uh, does cause a lot more problems than you would expect. Kind of the things they don't advertise in the retirement thoughts. Well, I've just painted a rather realistic, but maybe slightly painful picture in these 12 minutes. What I would like for you to do right now is um, for you to say, what is the state of my mind about when I will stop working full time? And then what will I do? What will I do? And can there be a way for me to start doing something now that I could do? until the day I die or the day that I can't do anything else. I would like you to do that because this is a good time. The detour sign is out. Uh, what if the recession is combined with inflation? What if there are going to be layoffs and unemployment? One of the nice things about my life as an entrepreneur most of the time is I say uh, I've never been unemployed been broke a number of times, but never unemployed. What would you begin to do that could give you that something not only to do, but something that could also in some way bring a measure of pleasure and profit? Some pleasure and profit into your life. What would be your financial plan, your retirement plan, if you can't retire? I'm Stan Houston. An interesting idea. We'll be back.
Well, first of all, I'm going to do something that uh, my good friend Peter McClellan, who helped a number of people do their retirement, and he himself has just retired, and he actually dealt with that issue. And one of the things that uh, we came to the conclusion of, <laughs> conclusion of is that we needed to say in all faith and probability, I'm sorry, but you cannot retire. And that's okay. That's okay. We will find a way. In fact, it might be the best thing that ever happened to you. I remember my friend Dave, who's literally now approaching his 80s and is still an active handyman. And he does a lot of just wonderful work for anybody. He's got a little bit of a retirement plan, and he has compensation coming from that, from his many, many, many years of hard labor and work. And um, he then also has a series of people who pay him to do the good work that he does. And so he's free to work whenever he wants to work, but he also has the opportunity to help others who need help, and he has the opportunity to make some extra money. And then with a smile, he says this to me. He said, Stan, you know my life. And I said, oh, David, because he's quite a character. He said, Stan, here's what I discovered. Whenever I wasn't working hard, I usually got in trouble. <laughs> Whenever I wasn't working hard, I usually got in trouble. And I just leave it with that smile. Please keep in mind that perhaps part of what life is all about is to understand that we were made to work. We were made to make a contribution. We were made to uh, care for others. We were made to do those things that can be helpful and useful. We were made to please God because we served others. And if you actually will take that point of view, you can probably say, well, I cannot retire. I cannot afford to retire. But that's okay. Please reach out to me. I'm Stan Houston. Perhaps I can be helpful and useful to you. In fact, uh, there's an 80-year-old woman uh, who is now doing podcasting and is having the time of her life. And she's actually beginning to get nice donations from the people who enjoy her program. And it's about living well when you're, uh, quote, not fully retired. Maybe that's something you should do. Maybe you should say, you know, maybe I should start doing some podcasting too. I bet I've always kind of wanted to write a book or maybe be on the radio. Maybe this is the time to do that. And Maybe that could actually help me, keep me from getting bored, and actually maybe help me with room and board. I'm Stan Houston. Reach out to me at stanhouston at gmail.com, stanhouston at gmail.com. I can help you. I can help you. And I would look forward to that. Best and blessings for you on the weekend. Rest, recreation, reflection, worship, put it all together, and then uh, Monday will be just fine. Bye for now.